So this is your first regularly scheduled yeah, yeah, yeah. right yeah. Friday so Being seven o'clock, I'll call the meeting to order. Um, before I go through the agenda, I want to welcome our new superintendent to his first regularly scheduled school committee meeting, mm -hmm. Dr. Christopher Martis. We're pleased to have you here. We look forward to great accomplishments. Thank you. It's uh, it's nice to be here. I think I had a warm up on Friday afternoon uh, yeah. when we were here for the policy uh, committee meeting, which went very very well, by the way. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Um, tonight we have visitors at 7, followed by approval of the minutes. A short six-minute video, uh, Did You Know, is the name of the video. Uh, then review and approval of the statement of interest for the Foxborough High School project. Update on the fiscal year 07 balances. Update on the summer capital projects. Uh, update from our new superintendent of schools. An update on school security. An update on the remaining open positions for 2007-2008, fiscal 08 food service bids, and then other matters. We will also go into executive session this evening, uh, not to come out uh, after executive session into any public session, to discuss strategy negotiations with non-union personnel. So at 7 o'clock, do we have any visitors that would like to be recognized? Mr. Nevada, are you getting up to be recognized or are you just fixing your computer? No, no. Okay. Uh, I know you've asked for the information ahead. So. Thank you, sir. Thank you. To that one. Press this one. Ooh. You can read along. Andres um, Cabello, 94 Spruce. Um, in the Navy, I learned about that leadership includes uh, giving follow-up to, to one's orders. And Mr. Hampton mentioned at a recent meeting that he had uh, looked at the school's website and, and that some mi uh, minutes were missing. And uh, I just want to say, say thank you for that. For you know, for, for closing that accountability loop. Uh, while looking at those newly uh, posted minutes, I came across a statement in the superintendent search subcommittee minutes of the January 23 meeting of 2007. And uh, as we can see, and that's in the first page, it says that Mr. Kuchar stated that uh, if Ms. Larry and Ms. Adair get together to work on the search, it does not need to be a posted meeting. I was confused by this statement uh, because the Norfolk County District Attorney seems to have a different opinion. Uh, as you can see in, in page two of uh, this few pages I've put together of references, uh, the subcommittees appointed by a governmental body are subject to the open meeting law. And as long as a body, however constituted, is carrying out delegated functions or responsibilities of a parent body, its meetings must be open to the public. Uh, it, it almost seems also in, in page three that the open meeting law itself is uh, a little bit contrary to what Mr. Kucher was saying uh, as it reads, a notice of every meeting of any governmental body shall be filed with the clerk of the city or town. And we would like for the committee at some point in the future to, to clarify this 
because it's not only relevant for the subcommittee, the superintendent search subcommittee, or because that already passed, but also to the school committee as a whole and planning board, Patriot Place uh, subcommittee, and because you know the public would want to be involved in that and, and be notified of those. Uh, I'm not saying that there were any that they were not posted. As a matter of fact, I believe that they were. But I wonder if this is uh, perhaps a little bit confusing to the public in general. And, and sometimes, uh, as I understand, the MASC is not a governmental organization. And Mr. Kucher is not, is, uh, he's the executive director of the MASC, but he's not a, a governmental uh, representative, as far as I know. Um, but it would be better, I, I would like to see uh, an attitude of trying to include the public as opposed to trying to find out the ways that we don't have to include them. And, and if that would be reflected in, in, in the minutes, or, or at least in Mr. Kutcher's statement. Uh, I don't know if there was a misunderstanding or, or whatever, but I just wanted to bring this to your attention. Thank you very much. Mom, Thank you. Do you want to respond to that? Yeah, I do. I think what he was referring to was if we had a question, we could talk to each other. We didn't have to post a meeting. It wasn't that we were making any decisions or coming up with anything. It was just that if we wanted to talk to each other, we could. But certainly anything that was done was done in public. It was posted. There was no... Um, there were no meetings. There was, were no meetings. Yeah. So. so there were no meetings and there were no, no meetings to be posted. But if there, were, if there were to have been a meeting, it would have been posted. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other comments from any visitors? Uh, hearing none, we have uh, two sets of minutes to approve tonight. Uh, we have the first set is the June 18th regular meeting minutes. Any comments or corrections? Uh, which one are you doing? June 18th, 2007. Okay. Regular meeting minutes. No comments or, or suggestions, but I have just one question. And I asked it that night, but I forget the answer, so bear with me, my colleagues. On the school improvement plans, we no longer have to make a motion to vote them approval. It's, all, it's automatic. We did the, sc the school handbook. You don't need to approve elementary school. Yeah. It's under the discussion. So the, the school improvement plans no longer need to be approved by the by the school committee. Thank you. That's what I recall. I couldn't remember. I knew I had asked the yeah. question, but I couldn't remember. Right. Didn't know. <coughs> didn't need to That's relatively that. new, I think, too. In the yes, last in the last week. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'll try to remember. It for next Is week. there a motion to approve? I so make that. I'll check it. Motion by Kate. <laughs> second by Katie. <coughs> Any further discussions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 4 0 and 1. Absent. 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 I was going to say she abstained, but she's not here to abstain. So. Um, and for those that are wondering, Beverly is on a, um, a retreat in Mexico. Is that not correct? Where she's doing. Um, Charity work, charitable work. Um, we also have the July 13th um, minutes from Friday the 13th um, at the policy meeting. Uh, the committee reviewed the, uh, the statement explaining the Massachusetts School Building Authority requirements and the SOI for approval. Uh, when we submit that, we have to note that both the selectmen approved it school committee approved it and we have to attach the approved minutes with the request and so that's why we're trying to approve these tonight are there any comments on this set of minutes no. i'll make a motion to accept I'll second any further discussion all those in favor opposed motion passes 4-0 um do you need to abstain from that uh, I'm, I'm sorry yes okay and um, what, what Paul has asked me to do, uh, since I wasn't at that meeting, to send a separate letter with the minutes that represent my vote, that I supported it totally, and that I was out of town and not able to vote. So there's no doubt on the part of the state uh, of, of the support. Okay, the next item is a, uh, is a short video. Um, what, one of the things that I wanted to talk to the committee about is that the change changes that are happening in the world today are coming at light speed 
and this change is impacting every business and every employee in this global economy. <coughs> our methods for educating our students is also going to need to be changed. First, our students learn differently today than some of us did even 10, 20, or 30 years ago. And number two, um, there needs to be in the United States a rededication um, of ourselves to learning excellence. Um, Carl Fish put this video together to try to influence not only businesses across America, but also educational institutions into thinking about education in a radical way, a different way, and, and coming up with a sense of urgency around some of the changes that we need to make. He put a lot of time and effort into this and does not prohibit anybody from showing it to anybody in the world. He is trying to get people to understand and show it. Um, he has talked in the past about history teaching us. He, history has taught us about the fall of the Greek, the Roman, the Spanish, the French, the British, and the Soviet empires, among many others. And what he's trying to do is to help people in America understand that if we don't re-engineer our educational system, history will repeat itself with respect to the United States. Now, while Foxborough is considered a high-performing school district in Massachusetts, <coughs> our scores, as we know, have leveled out over the last several years. And in essence, by leveling out, we're really falling behind. As a school committee, we must provide the support to drive necessary fundamental changes in our educational system. Working with our teachers, working with parents, we need to think about things differently. And I thought that as we worked with Dr. Dr. Martis and his team in establishing the 2007 and 2008 goals and objectives, that the school committee would be bold in its support for the necessary changes that would be needed to raise the performance bar for every student. This is a six-minute video which I think makes the case better than anyone else uh, could make it. And so with that, Paul, would you put the video on?
couple of the things that I thought were so interesting in there is realizing that in China and India, they have more honor students than we have total students. That China is close to becoming the number one English-speaking country. That the top ten jobs in 2010 will not have existed in 2004. That Nintendo, who spent $140 million in R&D a few years ago, the federal government spent less than half of that in innovation and education. When you think of Google and 2.7 billion searches a month, you know how students and children are using the Internet as well as adults. But what's really interesting is when they talk about how half of what someone learns, that you know, by the time they get to be a junior, half of what they learned will be obsolete. That's how quickly things are changing. And so it's so important to understand how children learn today, how students learn very differently than those of us that are on the school committee, or many of us that are in administration, or many of us that are teaching today. And, and Carl's <coughs> whole drive behind this is to get the educational system in America to start to think differently, to look at the world and what's happening in the world and how the world is investing in education far greater than the United States. And I just think that as we're sitting down in September to talk about 2007, 2008 goals and objectives, as we're sitting down next year talking to the teachers about a new contract, that it's time for us to unite with teachers and administrators uh, and school committee to look for innovative ways that we can do things differently so that the students of Foxborough have a better chance of success five years from today, ten years from today, and fifteen years. Uh, it is very clear to me in just a little over a year sitting on the school committee um, that the education system in America moves very slowly and trying to create change at the college level or the high school level or the elementary level is very difficult. Uh, but it is a responsibility that all of us have and I hope that as we go through 2007 and 2008 we'll keep some of that video in mind and we'll look at ways to be creative and innovative and maybe just not only move our schools in the right direction, but set an example for all of those in Massachusetts uh, that innovation and creativity is not dead in America and that the school system can change and can become innovative and continue to do the kinds of things to help our students excel versus students elsewhere. Any comments uh, from anybody on the, on the video? Excuse me, if you're going to ask any questions, you have to come to the mic. <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> I think it's going to be important for us to sit with the administrators and the teachers and listen to what they have to tell us. Exactly. And, you know, I, we all bring something to the table, but I think it's important. I know last year when I, on opening day, when I spoke to the teachers and I said, you know, it's my job to make sure you have the tools to do your job, and I expect you to do your job. And together we can we can make a difference, and I think that's what's important. Is we, we need to know what they need, and then we have to respect it, and we have to advocate for it. And as you see, last year we did a lot to move the agenda forward, mm -hmm. and, and that's just the first step. We have a lot more that we can do as a group, um, <coughs> and I know that working with our teachers and our administrators that we can come up with innovative solutions that will help us move forward. Did Carl Fisk give any suggestions as to radical thinking? I mean, he's trying to push for radical thinking. Right. Did he have any that he... Uh, he does have some thoughts. He has some thoughts about businesses. He has some thoughts about education and what we need to do. One of the things he talks about is that if you take a look at public education today, uh, we still use heavy textbooks. Now, if you remember, one of the advantages of the new math program that we have was the online piece that came with it. So not only students can use the online, but their parents can use the online. But if you look at how students learn today, it's very different, and yet the textbooks and the way we present information is the way it's been for a very, very long period of time. So he's challenging us to think about understanding how children learn today and not trying to change them to adapt to our learning methods, but to change some of the learning methods. And so when he talks about this $100 computer project, it's an effort with a number of companies, in, in, including Intel, who just signed up to it, but to provide these computers <coughs> to privileged children. Because his feeling is that we need, the whole world needs to, to, to grow. But when you start to think about the resources that those children will be getting with free computers, and you look at where we were just two years ago, 
in Foxborough, two years ago we had computers that were seven, eight years old and we didn't have all the computers we needed. And so what he's urging us to do is understand how children learn and adapt the process. And if that means laptops or other kinds of tools that will help those children deal in a world that is changing so dramatically. He also talks about the fact that um, China is becoming such a megaforce in the business world that um, schools should be thinking about offering Chinese to their students because those that, that succeed in business in 10 or 20 or 30 years will have an advantage if they speak Japanese as well as English. In Japan, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Chinese as well as English. In China today, they're teaching them not only English, but they're also teaching them other languages so that the Chinese can grow up and, and work in the business world um, and that they can talk in the language of the people uh, that they're dealing with and not just a neutral language such as English. So he's challenging us in our foreign language skills, he's challenging us in our use of computers, and he's asking us to think differently about how we present information and how we, in some cases today, um, it's important to memorize the right answer because it's testing your knowledge. Today with the internet and Google, what he's talking about is what's really important is are you able to go and search the data? Are you able to go and find it when you need it? I would tell you that in corporations today, we're finding that people don't want sit-down classrooms anymore. That the, the younger worker today says, put it on a CD, put it out on the web, I'll take the training when I need it. And they don't want to sit in the class with 20 others for six or eight hours. They just learn very differently. So he's urging businesses who are providing training to their employees to think very differently about how they provide that training and give it just in time, provide it on the web, uh, because employees today are great at being able to search that data. And so he's trying to teach, I'll call it life skills, as opposed to individual knowledge, knowledge about history or science or math, but how do you learn and how do you uh, grow from there and how do you use that to your advantage? You want to come up front? He doesn't have all the answers, he's just trying to raise the questions. Sue A. Rooms, principal of the Ahern Middle School. I just thought I would show you to know so that you would understand that we are sort of on the same wavelength. Um, this is a new product from the um, Association for Curriculum and Development, ASCD, that um, we will be using for professional development. It's called Learning to Think and Thinking to Learn, which is, and actually the data in the front is very similar to the data that you gave on that uh, okay. program. And um, one of the goals of professional development um, over this coming year is to investigate those very aspects of how children think and elevate the questions to the problem solving because the successful adults of tomorrow are those who can be presented with the facts and solve them differently. So I just thought I would let you know that we are working toward that. And if you need right. funding to do some of that research. Mr. Jackson will say, don't say that to you me. Should, <laughs> you, should be, you should be coming back to the school committee because as Martha said, we have to work together. You can't do everything on a shoestring. And over the last year, we've made substantial investments where you and others have felt are necessary. And I want to encourage you as you start down that path to come back to us. But one of the other things that Carl talks about is we have to find a way to get parents at home to understand that message because he feels as though teachers are starting to understand it, administrators, it's hard to change the process, but they're starting to. But we also have to help parents at home understand how the world is changing and what we need to do differently. And, and the support for education is going to continue to grow, not shrink. And if you read the newspapers in um, southeastern Massachusetts, there are quite a lot of communities struggling with the funding for education. Um, and it's only going to get more difficult going forward if we're going to make the investment in the children of the future. Thanks. Chris? Yeah, I think it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an enormous challenge um, because um, we've kind of gotten ourselves over the last 10 years or so into more narrowing the curriculum right. than expanding the curriculum. And we've been in this, in this uh, kind of what I call a baseball standings race to look at the globe every once in a while and find out where your town is ranked. So uh, I think we need to be bold enough to broaden that discussion and to say it's not just how well we do on this set of tests, 
uh, but it's what do we what do we mean by success, right. and, and how do we expand thinking and, and those kinds of programs, and, and uh, so I, so I think it's I, I think it's an interesting dilemma because I, I think public education in America has has for a long period of time, which is why we've been number one in a lot of measures uh, around productivity. It's because of the creative and flexible thinking that we've had. So we've we've then been in an era where we've where we've tightened that uh, more, and I think a community like this really needs to stand out there and say, okay, we we are going to look at this differently. We're going to look at success in different ways. We're going to we're going to try to be we're going to try to be more flexible about what we want our students to do. We've uh, Sue just had a great example at the middle school. I know that in, in uh, Jeff Theodos' uh, school improvement plan, we've been talking about virtual high school. Right. You know, opportunities for us to, to kind of expand our offerings and to give students. I've talked to, as I've, not to steal a later agenda item, but as I've been talking to people, I've been talking about how do we personalize education? How do we make it more individual? And how do we include families? Because that's really, I think that really is the key. Uh, I tell people during the school day, and we need to talk about the school day and the school year uh, in this discussion as well. During the school day, we're running fast. And, and we're trying to get a lot of things accomplished. But uh, so we need to broaden that. Think of it differently. I think technology is a great way uh, to look at that. But uh, you know, uh, knowing our students uh, of today will have 10 to 14 jobs uh, by the time they're 38 years old. Not in their whole lifetime, but by the time they're 38 years old should cause us to pause. And, and uh, I was saying to some of you when, uh, when we've met, uh, I've uh, I'm going to be at, at, uh, at, at the Kennedy School of Government uh, on Saturday working with a group from the Kennedy School, the Business School, and the Graduate School of Education around what does it mean to talk about good teaching and learning and how do we measure that and, and all that. It's an, it's an ongoing two to three year discussion that the state uh, has, uh, has uh, uh, received a, a, a major grant. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll be interested in coming back to the committee and working with the administrators around some of what, some of the, what that knowledge base is, is going to share with us. So, I, I do. I think it's. A, I think it's. I think it's a great opportunity for a community like this uh, that does have some resources and, and, and can smartly allocate in the right direction to be able to take a look at this now uh, and and say, you know, how are we now going to take the lead in this? Uh, and how are we going to be a model for other communities and other and other? Uh, so uh, I'm excited about it. I think I think that's a great. I I, I had a chance. Uh, Paul Jackson showed me that video a little while ago, and I had I had a chance to. Uh, this actually I, I, just as another aside, yesterday I just bought Howard Gardner, who uh, wrote the theory of multiple intelligences, new book, Five Minds for the Future. And uh, that speaks to what we really need to start to think about when we talk about uh, what does success look like. So I'm excited about it. I think it's a great opportunity to engage the community and, and a lot of our partners out there in, in, in this kind of discussion. So. Do, do you think, I read something today about the fact that they're going to look at the uh, No Child Left Behind Act right. and try to change it a little bit. I, I think what's frightening, and I've, I've said it over and over, it's not just a test. If you want to know what's going on in the classroom or how a child's doing, ask the teacher. They're with them every day. Right. They know which children are succeeding, which ones aren't. It's not that we need an MCAS or anything else to tell us that. And I think maybe if they really take a, a, a long, hard look at, at what they've passed and how they're not funding it and uh, try to come up with something that's a little bit more reasonable because I, I think there's a lot of schools that are, are mislabeled at this point and, and not justly so. And I, I think we do need to take a different look at it and hopefully somebody can get through to them this time. Well, the whole, I think that from when the act was passed in two, early 2002, when it was enacted, uh, I think much has changed yeah. uh, in that discussion. And, and I, I really believe we'll have uh, some opportunity over the next couple of months to, uh, to engage in that. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. When you take a, a narrow group of students uh, that we know struggle in different ways, whether they're English language learners or whether they're uh, special needs students, and we labeled the whole school yeah. failing because of a, a group, a narrow group of students. We need to broaden that discussion about, uh, you know, what, what those students should be doing. So that, I know that that was I read that there was a, there was a good article yeah. in the Globe today. It was about, like, uh, wow, somebody's yeah, paying attention. People are, people are paying attention. 
Any other comments from the committee members? Uh, anybody from the audience? Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, in answer to Ms. Kominsky, actually, um, we found this video online as well. Obviously, everything is on YouTube nowadays before it gets the, to the airwaves. Um, Mr. Fish has a blog, uh, and it's the Fish Bowl, F I S C H Bowl. I don't know if, what the domain is, but people may, get, may be able to get some of his ideas from there. Uh, he, he did this video last summer because he's the director of technology at a, I don't want to misquote the, the town or, or the district, but in Colorado. And, um, and for the teachers in the school and um, also what I, we have this available on our website. We just put it up um, and from the, it's linked from the front page. But what we went ahead and did was we found four versions of this. The one that you presented. Right. We also found a narrated one, uh, in which they have images. It's the same content, the same music. Uh, there's uh, a second one, which is uh, is called the second version, and there's even one in Chinese. Uh, and it's not a matter of are we topping the hakama, because we're not going to be competing at that level. Uh, like you said, it's going to be global. And he said he gives some of the credit to his uh, inspiration to Mr. Friedman's uh, book, uh, oh, the, the world is flat. Right. And I believe that's the term. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next item on our agenda, Paul. Uh, although the school committee has already approved uh, the statement of interest, we thought we would put it on the agenda for tonight so that those that uh, didn't watch Friday night's policy meeting would be able to have an overview. So I'll turn it back to you. I'll defer to Superintendent. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> we uh, had a, uh, just to give the public uh, a brief history, we had a very good session uh, last Tuesday evening with the Board of Selectmen. Uh, and uh, Mr. Jackson, Mr. O'Leary, and I uh, explained uh, that we have uh, new and I, I would say emerging rules and regulations from the Massachusetts uh, School Building Authority, which, uh, just to go back a little bit farther, was, was uh, moved from the Department of Education to uh, the Treasurer's Office, and, uh, and new rules are, are, uh, and regulations are, are out there right now. The one that we've really been pointing towards is having a statement of interest uh, following all of their guidelines into the Mass uh, School Building Authority by the end of this month, by July 31st. And so uh, Paul Jackson and Michael Leary and others have been working uh, using much of uh, what the McGuire Group uh, researched and analyzed about the condition of this building, of Foxborough High School. And uh, we've come up with areas that we believe are uh, going to uh, work for us uh, in uh, out of the eight priority areas we found three that we believe will work for us uh, and I'll just briefly go uh, I won't go over each area but I'll go over the priority areas the first one replacement or renovation of a school building which is structurally unsound or otherwise in a condition seriously jeopardizing the health and safety of school children where no alternative exists uh, number five, replacement, renovation, or modernization of the heating system in a schoolhouse to increase energy conservation and decrease energy-related costs in the schoolhouse. And number seven, replacement of or addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide for a full range of programs consistent with state and approved local requirements. So we felt those three areas out of the eight, uh, and we're not uh, believing at this point in time because we don't know uh, what the decisions will be, that you had to have all eight or you had to have four of the eight or, or anything like that. You're really analyzing each school uh, and, uh, and coming up with, with uh, areas that, that uh, the state uh, should be looking at when they make decisions about future funding. Uh, so I, I, I want to give again <coughs> Paul Jackson and Michael Leary uh, tremendous credit on it for putting all of this together. Uh, we felt that, uh, that uh, I think it's a comprehensive plan, uh, and we're just waiting to see what the state, uh, what the state does with uh, with the plan, what the available funding will be, how they prioritize, uh, and then I think from that, knowing that, then we can make some decisions 
ourselves about next steps. Uh, so I, I, uh, I, I think, as I said to the uh, Board of Selectmen last week, we, are, we have now the ability to get in line uh, in this program and we'll have, uh, we have now all the approvals from, from this committee, uh, from the Board of Selectmen, uh, and I think, we're ready. I think we're ready to submit. So. And Paul, when we submit it, we'll put a copy up on the website so citizens will be able to read it, understand what, what it is that we're talking about when we talk about the roof or the heating system or the windows or the science labs, et cetera. Sure. I mean, it's consistent with what we've been saying for the last year, and it's consistent with the video we put out showing the issues within the high school but I think it's important for them to have access to the actual document. Okay. Questions or comments from the board, from the committee? I'm thrilled that we were so proactive and we have our ducks in order and uh, we're, we're ready to go on this. And the, the committee was very forceful about what we wanted to do and um, hopefully we'll be one of the first. Well, it was also encouraging, Monica, that the selectmen clearly understand that the high school is nearly 40 years old and clearly understand the need for the roof, for the heating system, the windows, et cetera. Um, when we did our tour last fall, some of the selectmen were there for the tour. They were able to see it firsthand. Um, some of them have children that have been through the system, so they understand as well what, what it's all about. So it's, it's, again, it's an effort of trying to work across the community. It started last fall with our our open house and showing people and then we had the video and we've continued to have meetings on cable on Charlie Charlie show to talk about it we've had meetings with the selectmen and the idea is to continue to educate um, the taxpayer at home with the issues that we're dealing with with a 40 year old building mm -hmm. and uh, we're doing everything we can to get as much state assistance as we can but there's also uh, there also has to be a recognition at some point if the state is not going to fund it that we're going to have to reach out to the community and address the needs uh, much like we've addressed them in the fire and, and uh, the, the public safety building. Um, uh, there are some real capital needs at the high school that we need to address. Well, I think the other thing, Larry, is we've been down this road with the Ahern School, and by waiting, by allowing it to get to a, a state of condition that was just so unacceptable, that we can never allow that to happen again in this town. And, and in waiting and and you know, procrastinating, it costs us twice as much money probably in the long run. So we as a committee have to make sure that we just don't go down that road again. Well, and I think it's important for the community to understand um, that we are, we are investing in our buildings in maintenance. So it's not like we're letting the maintenance go down. But when you have a 40-year-old heating system and a 40-year-old, you know, windows, and the roof is, is close to its, its um, lifespan, et cetera, these are the kinds of things that we're talking about. We're not talking about cutting maintenance on a day-to-day -day basis so that we can fund something else. Um, in fact, reports have come out saying how well our buildings are maintained. And I think when, when parents come back in September and the students come back, they see the tremendous job that Mr. O'Leary and his team do all summer long to get the schools ready. So it's not the regular maintenance that, that we're neglecting or not doing. That's being done. It's real capital items like roofs, like heating systems and windows. And our science labs, which are almost 40 years old, are becoming obsolete as well. And as people at home know, a lot of kitchens that are 40 years old have already been renovated, or if not, there, are, there are certain people that want them renovated within the house. And in our case, we know that when the, uh, the educators have come in from outside, they've critiqued our science labs and that they've raised questions about our um, the value of those labs and the impact uh, on uh, our own credentialing. So it's real important for us to continue uh, talking about the issue, working the state. Our state representative and our state senator were here to hear the presentation. Um, they are taking it to, uh, to Boston as well. And so we just want the people at home to know we're doing everything we can to get as much state assistance. Uh, but we, we are going to have to deal with some of these long-term capital needs um, in the future. When we ha when we're in at the um the state house. Chris and I had a meeting with um, Pat Hadded, and we talked about the fact that you know a system like or a town like Foxborough shouldn't be punished for the fact that we do try to maintain our buildings. When you look at ours compared to somebody else's that's falling down around them, you know we shouldn't be punished for the fact that we've done a good job of trying to maintain things with with the help of Michael Larry and his group of, of men. So. You know, we, we talked about that, and I, I think she listened when, when we said yeah, you can't be punished for it. It's men and women. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I, th I, th I think she did pay, pay close attention, and, and this may be something that we'll have to look at legislatively if we, yeah. once we find out what the decisions are, you know, what the decisions are with the, with the school building authority, it may be something that, uh, that I think would be very positive legislation uh, mm -hmm. that we could join with some other communities that are also doing some good work on that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next item on the agenda is an update on the fiscal year 07 balances and how much we're going to be turning back to the town. Paul, do you want to give us the update? Mr. Chairman, Friday was the last day of the fiscal year for FY07. I have distributed a copy of our budget. I'm sorry. I have distributed a copy of the summary FY07 budget statement. It will uh, show on the last page that we are turning back to the town the sum in the amount of $64,334. Normally, I provide a cover memo and very detailed uh, transaction information. The, uh, given that the year finished Friday, I haven't had a chance to put together the detailed information. However, the detailed information is actually uh, in the statement. It's highlighted in black in each one of the uh, sections. We will have for the next school committee meeting cover memo with that detailed transfer information on an account by account basis. And that's when you'll want, you'll seek the final approval for fiscal 07 transfers? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions on this report for Paul? Uh, uh, I would you <coughs> like us to vote this as a monthly or are we covered by our last meeting? I think what, what I heard him say is that our next meeting he's going to give us the final report with all the transfers and ask for a formal approval at that point with his cover letter. But this is our only meeting for July this year. No. We, we vote approval every month. Should we, should we vote? Does it matter to you, Paul, if we no. wait till August? No, we can wait till August. Okay. okay. Thank you. I, I do want to say, too, that it is, I think, very detailed, even though Paul, you're saying it needs to be more detailed. I think it's very detailed as it goes to <laughs> Well, if this is sufficient, <laughs> then we can stop. I, I, I think it is, to tell you the truth. I, uh, well, the number isn't going to change. The number is going to change. It's the time that you don't have to do it. Absolutely. A, a memo. So, yeah. Then why don't we just accept it? I'll entertain a motion to approve it. I, I make a motion that I'll we approve second. it. We have a motion by Martha, second by Katie. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. And Paul, it, it's important. I, I know you get upset when we congratulate you for the tremendous effort you've put <laughs> forth because you say it's not you, it's the entire staff. So let's publicly. Uh, take a minute to acknowledge those folks that work in your office to get this done. Maybe you want to just share their names with the public at home, those folks that work so hard every day to make this. You're assuming I know their names. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which chair they know the worst, Paul. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look like, uh, uh, Joan Bradley and Carolyn Clark uh, deal with the expense side of the house, and Jim uh, McGowan and Connie McLaughlin handle the payroll side, and Pam kind of coordinates the grants, and keeps me honest so that they're the, uh, they're the group that really uh, provides the data and the detail for this. And, and they've stepped up all year long uh, Absolutely. to help us throughout this. We had a uh, person go on, the full-time person go on maternity leave September? in September. And Caroline Clark stepped up to the plate, uh, filled the role. We brought some part-time people in and uh, We've now hired an assistant to Caroline. Caroline has decided that she took the job as the lead bookkeeper, and uh, we now have two 30-hour people instead of a 40-hour and a 20-hour person. But uh, so far, it's worked out well, and uh, and we're moving ahead. And they do a terrific job. Great. And what's exciting is not only do we get to return some money to the town, which is important, but if everybody recalls, uh, we, we did a lot in the last uh, couple of months to address the needs of each one of our principals. They came forward with what their needs were, and I believe every one of their requests were approved by the school committee. And even some that weren't quite uh, full request uh, when we uh, talked about those issues, like initially the, the playground at Taylor, uh, the committee said, let's move forward with that, uh, even though they weren't actually asking us for the help. So I think that we should feel very proud that we were able to use the money wisely this year. Uh, we did not only use it to improve <coughs> curriculum and other things during the year, but as we got closer to the end of the year, we made the investments that each of the principals needed, as well as capital, like in things like the playground, and we did some capital with some of the schools to improve some things. And I think you'll hear in, in a few minutes the projects that are going on this summer 
some of which we have funded as well out of this year's um, either revolving accounts or this year's money, again, to, to demonstrate the fiscal responsibility uh, and the investments we're making into our community and our schools. So, Mr. O'Leary, um, you're on next. Would you like to come forward and give us an update on the summer capital projects? In mid July, I'm not in panic mode yet. Um, <laughs> we're actually ahead of schedule. Um, school getting out a week earlier than it did last year is, is believe me, a bonus for us. No snow days. Um, that's great. We pick up a week. Um, so the buildings were, again, as far as I'm concerned, is at least a week ahead of schedule. We're cleaning the um, second floor of this building. They're doing the corridors now. Same thing at the Ahern. Um, every classroom's been cleaned, waxed. Um, furniture put back, washed. Uh, so we're well ahead of schedule. Uh, same thing in the elementaries. Uh, as far as the projects go, uh, the bleachers in the high school gym have been refurbished. We're about 95% complete. The only thing we're waiting on is some uh, handrails that are being manufactured for the new stairs that we put in, um, called P-rails. Um, you should be back within about two weeks to put them on, and uh, the bleachers will be complete. If you ever walk through the gym, you'll see them. I think they come out wonderful. We've got uh, safety rails. We have um, handicapped access seating. We have stairs now with railings. Um, I think they come out great. So, again, that's 95% complete. As soon as the handrails go in, we're done. Um, the IGO, um, we emptied uh, two floors completely, uh, 15 classrooms and some offices so we could uh, do some abatement on some floor tile. Uh, the abatement has been completed. Um, the tile people are in. The whole first floor has been prepped and um, five classrooms as of this afternoon have actually been tiled and we're following right behind them. The minute they finish tiling, we go in, wash windows, clean them, and start waxing. We follow them right down. Um, they're actually on the second floor now prepping those floors. Um, some of them were, were a little tougher shape than we thought they would be in after all these years when we took up the tile, so they have to completely prep the whole floor. Um, but they were in Saturday and did a tremendous amount of work on Saturday. He had a big crew in, so um, that's moving along very well. So we're ahead of schedule on that. Um, the borough, um, believe it or not, we had all the windows tinted um, in the cafeteria. What a difference. It's got to be. 10 degrees, maybe 15 degrees cooler in that cafeteria in the heat of the day. Um, I wouldn't believe what a difference the film could make. Um, so that was accomplished. Right now we're um, in-house. We're starting tomorrow to install sound absorbing panels. I don't know if you've ever been in that cafeteria at lunchtime. Aye, aye, aye. Um, <laughs> we, we installed some at the tail a few years ago um, and they were somewhat successful. So. Um, it's the borough's turn, so we'll be installing those tomorrow. Um, painting, we got a painting program that we go in. We do everything in-house as much as possible, so we have some part-time help and some um, uh, fill-in people that do some painting. And I think we've accomplished, we've painted um, five down at the borough so far. We painted five at the IGO. Um, shortly, we're going back to the IGO to do some offices that we've got to paint that uh, we have to put down before the new rug is in that the tile was abated. So uh, we're going to do that. And then the last month of the um, summer, we'll probably be end up at the uh, uh, Hearn School doing the rest of the corridors. Um, believe it or not, in six years, the corridor show wear. So we're going to paint those. Um, Taylor School, the playground. Um, school committee approved some funding along with what the uh, committee, uh, the uh, PTO down there raised um, because they had selected a vendor because um, it wasn't public funds they could do it now that we're using public funds we almost had to go back and start over again so they put it on RFP to um, three vendors to select equipment and I believe they met today with Paul he told me he had the selection committee uh, approved a vendor um, Paul went over the um, proposals to make sure they were acceptable and legal. Um, so we do have a vendor, that, a selected vendor. I'm going to meet with him tomorrow um, to do the layout 
and the highway department will be going up in the evenings and doing all the excavation for us. Um, so they're going to be excavating hopefully by the end of the week. Um, we'll put the timbers in, they can install the equipment, and then we'll have the mulch delivered. So the playground will be installed before the school starts. Um, the only thing I wish was started by now was the curving out here, but I just talked to the, the contractor yesterday. Um, he was on the middle of Route 18 finishing a job. Um, he said as soon as that job is finished, he will start the curving out here. He has assured me um, that it will be completed before school starts. He said, really, it's not that big a job. Um, I will have it completed. So I take him at his word. So we will have new curbing out here before school starts and the paving. Um, any questions? Are you on budget with all the projects, Mike? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Um, yeah. We're, actually, we're in very good shape. Like I said, I won't start to panic till mid-August. Um, when I don't have curbing in. Um, but right now, uh, I, the guys have been great. Um, the crew's working very hard. You know, they're taking their vacations in between, one at a time. Um, so we always have guys, everything keeps moving forward. Uh, again, as far as I'm concerned, we're well ahead of schedule. Uh, buildings will look very good. Okay. Right. Questions from the committee? Not so much a question, but this is my fourth year, and I am always so impressed. Um, also, Mike, with your with your team, not just what you accomplish in the in the summer, uh, you do wonderful things, but you're also an integral part of all the capital planning. And we know when you estimate or you tell us what needs to be done or what the priority list, you and Paul Jackson, another great team you have. So. I'm I'm in awe for my, this is my fourth year in a row so thank you and your update is also earlier this year so thank you. No, I do I do appreciate it. I, I, thank I, you again, for you and your team. With the help of Paul, I yeah, you also have a. a, a I, great I couldn't team. do it without him. Believe me. So and the crew I have is they are great workers. Uh, I mean you know the work is repetitious. It, it's it's labor intensive and every day they come in ready to go. Um, so I, I do appreciate what they do. Believe me. They make so me we, look good. So Katie, do you have anything? No. Thank you. Martha? No. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have any questions? Yeah, this is this is not my fourth year. This is a little shorter than that. But, uh, <laughs> fourth uh, I've, I've Trust I've us, had, he's very impressive. I've, I've had, uh, and I've had an opportunity, and I'll probably be doing a lot of this in the next few months, but uh, as you know, to work in other school systems. And uh, this is impressive right from the beginning. I mean, it's, it's really the the amount of effort that goes into this, the planning that goes into this, uh, uh, it, it is impressive. And we had a chance to, you know, walk around and, and uh, look and see what uh, what was going on. And uh, the work is is, uh, but we all do, we all do in mid August get nervous. I, that's, just, that's, <laughs> that's the norm. Uh, but I also wanted to say that I, I had a chance with with uh, Paul uh, uh, to look at the plans for the Taylor Playground today, and. Uh, I think that's the right bid. It, it looks like a real, uh, so it's going to be tremendous. Uh, and the Taylor PTO would like to be on our agenda, I think, uh, in August to uh, to show us really what's going to happen. So it'll really show, just as you mentioned earlier, Larry, where the money is going and the uh, types of uh, types of improvements that will be made. So I think that uh, Mike, if we put the fence in. I, I get Steve Panic is a very busy man. I, he's on. We're on his agenda. Okay. Um, that, that'll be in before school that'll starts. That'll be before too. school starts. Yeah, that's it. He said that that's a quick job, and he'll that's use it as a fill-in. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah, at the yeah. I go in back. Between about St. Mary's and the church. About a hundred feet of um, hundred feet of vital yeah, coated chain link fence. Beautiful. Um, so, like I say, I'm on Steve's agenda, but um, he is this time of the year. He's extremely busy, but he promised me he'll have it before school starts. Okay. So, all right. Uh, the next item on the agenda is an update as the new superintendent of schools, Dr. Martis. Well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I have. Um, I'll just I'll just go through the list that I've been compiling over the last week or so, uh, in terms of what what I call the entry plan. You know, and, and that really is uh, coming in and, and getting to know people and having discussions and and uh, hopefully more and more people understanding that the, that the office is open and I'm um, interested in hearing from people and uh, as we start to structure how we move ahead uh, I think that's really the way that uh, this needs to take place so uh, my uh, scheduled meetings with each one of you individually 
uh, we have we have accomplished that, and, and uh, I, I won't. Uh, all of you, you're invited to come back as uh, as Bev Lord has already come back uh, <laughs> for a second meeting, <laughs> which has been great. Uh, I've met with uh, Andy Gala, the town manager, Ed O'Leary uh, again today, uh, talking a little bit more about safety. Uh, Jerry McNamara, the fire chief, uh, Vivian Pitts, the town treasurer. Uh, I've had multiple meetings with all the principals and, and uh, been, attended two board of selectmen uh, meetings about the statement of interest for the high school. Uh, had a terrific meeting, uh, and this really speaks to our first uh, uh, item, uh, which we also need to include, school to career work with Ellen Pillsbury. Yeah. That's a critical role, I think, in, in what we want to talk about in terms of, of uh, students being you know, ready for, uh, <coughs> I've had great meetings with uh, with all of the central office uh, staff, and, and uh, it is a strong group from Ingrid to Paul and, and uh, Cindy Bernelli, our director of special education. I've met with our new athletic director. I've had a two-hour meeting with our school attorney, Mike Lochran. Uh, I have a meeting scheduled uh, uh, soon with Sheila Peterson from uh, Invensys. Uh, I had a terrific meeting this morning with uh, Dan Murphy, who's the Vice President of Business Development and uh, External Affairs for the New England Patriots, uh, and looking at creating partnerships uh, that uh, can help both organizations. And, and I think when you think of, uh, of uh, leadership and high-quality organizations and the kinds of things that they're able to do, uh, we can learn from them, and I think they can, uh, they can learn from us in some ways as well. So. Uh, I've been able to uh, I've, I've been able to do all that and and, uh, and and still check all of my email and uh, prepare the the agenda. So it's been a it's been a great couple of weeks and, and uh, I've also met with a number of parents and and uh, and others and, and uh, have more meetings scheduled uh, over the next uh, over the next few weeks. And, and again, the the way I'm trying to frame this is really uh, around um, how do we get to know each other better. Uh, and how do we put all of those uh, ideas together so that people can start to think that uh, we're all moving along uh, in, the, in the same way and, uh, and, and it's open. It's, it's, it's open. We're proud of what we do. Uh, we're, we will acknowledge that we don't do everything as well as we'd like to do it. Uh, and that's the only way that we're going to continue to improve and, and, uh, and to get better. But uh, it's, it's, uh, so far it's still fun. <laughs> so, uh, and, and and again, and I want again. I, I do want to say this publicly, uh, and, and because I've said it to everyone that I've met with, uh, and I haven't just met in the office. What I what I also like to do is uh, is uh, I had a chance to visit the fire station, and, and I forgot. I think probably the last time I visited was jumping on the trucks when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and uh, and it looks the same. <laughs> uh, but the, Mike and I actually, Mike O'Leary and I had a chance uh, last week to go over to the new public safety building. And that should really make the, the community proud. I, mean, that, I was with Ed O'Leary and looking at his shag carpeting this uh, earlier today. He's got shag carpeting from, from I'm not even sure when. And uh, it reminded me of the controversy in the 80s when that went in. And, and, uh, the, but he has a fabulous office that, that uh, will open up in the fall. And uh, really, uh, really speaks well to uh, the, the town's commitment to both the schools and the municipal side. So, uh, but I, again, I, I want to make sure that people understand that uh, if you want to come in and meet, just uh, call Wendy. Wendy uh, is the person who controls my calendar. <laughs> so, <laughs> puts everything in. And that's how I how I've always done this work as a superintendent. So. Uh, Anyone who's interested in sharing uh, any information, uh, uh, having a sense of uh, what we need to do in order to continue to improve, that's that's the goal. So. Excellent. Chris, why don't you take the next two topics and then we'll open up for questions. Sure. Uh, okay. Um, I the uh, committee in the in the packet has. Um, I've been meeting, as I mentioned, with uh, Chief O'Leary. Uh, 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 Paul Jackson has been in some of those meetings and. And one, one of the areas that, uh, you know, I, I gave you a little background information uh, on the critical response program that, that he had sent to me and that, and that we had walked through. And, 
And uh, this is this is some work that's already been accomplished and, and uh, really needs some review. So that's really the phase that we're in now. But the what what I'm excited about is 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 he has, he is a part of a, an organization called the Metropolitan Law Enforcement Council, uh, Metro LEC, uh, which is a group of uh, 42 law enforcement <coughs> officers from the area, and uh, they are interested in uh, doing a safety analysis uh, starting right right here at Foxborough High School uh, and kind of working right through the school system. Now, I think because they are busy, it's going to take a little bit of time, but I think it will be a thorough analysis of uh, what the building looks like, what our plans look like. Uh, I know that um, we put in the packet. I've, I've, Everywhere. It's nice to work in a few different places because you can also borrow things. That uh, we spent a, a good deal of time in Framingham putting uh, the emergency uh, response plan together. I think a very simple um, way to approach this, and I know that, that there's been work that's been accomplished here in the district already. I'll, I'll have my um, copy just so they can just look at it and they can see the, the work that's been done. It's an excellent. And so we're, we're going to look at this along with what we also have uh, in the district. And, uh, and, and one, of the, one of the ways that this evolved even, you know, quite simply is that, you know, uh, the last time we revised this a couple of years ago, we decided to, to uh, put a hole in it so that we, it could just be right on, right next to the door. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't something someone had to look through a book or, or, or mm -hmm. try to find a book that might have been put on the desk <coughs> as we all get busy with other things. But, uh, so if anything happens, there's a response that uh, that everyone is ready for. Uh, and a, a lot of work um, in terms of practice and planning and and a lot of discussion about that. So so there are different levels of this that will continue to evolve evolve out of. Uh, but uh, Ed O'Leary has, uh, Chief O'Leary has a, uh, one of these. I've also connected him with, uh, with one of the um, Deputy chiefs who did a lot of work on this in Framingham in the last few years. I contacted him, and he said he'd he'd love to help us uh, uh, as we you know as we work through this. So I think with with MetroLEC, uh, the the area uh, law enforcement council, and with some models that we already have available, uh, just to pick up on on uh, the meeting I had today that I know that uh, Larry and Martha were involved with Dan Murphy. At, with the New England Patriots, they have also volunteered uh, their uh, safety and security uh, uh, company that actually is part of the, uh, it, it is part of the company, it's part, part of the, the crafts, right. part of the crafts company, Team Ops. Uh, they have uh, volunteered uh, that group to come and take a look at our schools as well. So. I'd, I'd like to have as many as many organizations, as many groups take a look at this because I think that's really the way we're going to uh, uh, we're going to be better at this. So, uh, in a very short period of time, I think we've put a lot of a, a, a lot of groups to this, and and I'll be reporting on this with others uh, as we as as we move through the plan. What was exciting about the Patriots? They they sent me an email. Dan sent me an email last week. And um, saying, you know, I've had a lot of time to think about our, our last meeting where you talked about how do we work closer together between the Patriots and the schools. And um, one of the things that we had encouraged him to do was to read the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Luckily, Dan is moving to Foxborough and having a house built, and his two twins are going to be going to the Taylor School. And so he said, as I read the newspaper, I understood some of the security issues. And we have an in house security force that not only works for us but does consulting around the country, both with other stadiums and other facilities, but also in the educational field, going out to schools. And this may be a good opportunity where we can reach out and provide you some free services um, uh, to help you improve security within the, within the Foxborough school system. So I think it's a great example of the Patriots responding to our discussion that the relationship was not as close as it could be and that we thought that by reaching out to them there were ways we could work together in the future. Uh, I anticipate lots of further discussions. One of those that they were very intrigued about, we shared with them the engineering program that we're going to have in place with Invensys this year. And um, at, at, the, the, at the stadium they have, <clears throat> they have a television studio, they have a, uh, a magazine, 
Uh, they have tremendous multimedia capability. And we said, you know, someone like Jerry Roy and his students would love to work with you in combination of some kind of a program, just like um, our friends are doing with engineering. So um, they in intend to engage with us going forward. They intend to improve the working relationship and to help us in any way we can uh, use their help. At the same time, I hope that we can provide assistance and help for them from time to time, um, such as having a a wonderful school system for all the children and for having a community uh, that uh, welcomes the, the New England Patriots and some of the things that they do. So it was, it was nice that he followed up with the email, he followed up with an offer, and um, Chris was able to capitalize on that quickly, meet with him, and, and we'll take it from there. And they, uh, they've also agreed to host our uh, new teacher uh, luncheon that okay. uh, they did last year, and, and uh, I mentioned that, I would already heard what a terrific success it was, and, and they said, "Well, that's you know, those are the easy ones that uh, that we we would love to help out in any way that we can help." So uh, it was it was a, ter a terrific meeting today, and, and we have uh, we have some ideas, and we're going to just keep you know emailing back and forth and meeting on occasion. And if others have ideas of uh, ways that we could that we can work together, uh, it'd be great. I mentioned to Wendy today that. Um, they, they also mentioned, uh, and I think this will come up in the newspaper, that um, August 6th is their, uh, they invite the community to come to the stadium for one of their open practices. The Foxborough Day. Yeah, so uh, they, they already mentioned that, and they've already, put, they've already put the date in, so I think that's a great opportunity for, for uh, people to come together and, and uh, uh, continue to build that relationship. So I think the school's uh, security piece, I'm, I'm pleased with the progress that we've made just over the last couple of weeks. And, and I know that, and Paul, you may want to just talk a little bit about uh, the uh, communication system and, and uh, what we've been uh, working on with Chief Oleo. <coughs> we purchased some uh, relatively low cost uh, two-way radios that we've tested at the high school and uh, perimeter of the high school. They, uh, in optimal conditions, will have up to a 16-mile range. They work very well inside the school district, inside the school building, as well as on the perimeter, which will uh, facilitate the communication uh, during the school day amongst the administrators and when they have people out patrolling the grounds, if you will, uh, during the day. By having those units available, it will open the door for the plan that we had discussed earlier where the police chief would purchase, or we would purchase, but he would maintain and keep uh, a dozen or so radios at the station. He'd make sure that they're always in working condition and charged, and in the event we did have an emergency, they would put together an emergency kit and show up at the location with sufficient radios. Uh, the advantage to us on this type of a program, he has a number of radios already in existence that, that they use during stadium events so that this would augment the radios that he currently has, but also allow us to have more than 12 radios available in the event there was an emergency. And the chief is still exploring uh, the possibility of expanding the range of these handheld devices by putting on an antenna and a repeated device, potentially on the uh, IGO school, not the, yeah, the IGO school and the uh, and one of the things that I asked if he could also explore during that uh, exploration was would we be able to also have our bus radios put on those other antennas and also take advantage of the repeaters. We have a number of dead spots in town with the bus radios and the bus that uh, heads off to Boston, or any bus that heads off to Boston actually, once it gets out on 95 and up about a quarter of a mile, we lose all communication with that bus. And he felt that with the uh, repeater, we'd be able to talk to the buses in town and on the North Shore, so that it would be something that would be a huge benefit to us in terms of our bus communication, which would also fit into the emergency plan, because it would be imperative during some emergencies that we have uh, very good communication with the buses. So that he's still doing some exploration on that with uh, his radio expert. You know, it looks that uh, we'd end up with the best of both worlds. How are we doing with the reverse 911? Yeah, that's our, that, actually, that's a good segue. We, uh, Paul and, and Chief O'Leary and, and uh, Paul Bordelotti, 
uh, and I met with uh, with a vendor uh, late in the week last week, and we're looking at uh, at some of our specs. I think uh, I think we have um, we need really now to look at uh, uh, bid the bid process or uh, other ways to take a look at uh, at that expenditure. So we uh, believe we have a very strong uh, uh, vendor that uh, we think is is. Uh, but we want to make sure that we've done all of our due diligence around around this process, so that. Uh, uh, but the chief, uh, we think that we can work together with uh, with Chief O'Leary and come up with a, a really state-of-the-art uh, program that will allow us to contact families um, in a very short period of time for uh, anything that may occur from from. Uh, an emergency to uh, even reminders about things. <coughs> so I think that will strengthen and deepen the communication process for us. Uh, but it's a little early. I think we'll have something at the next. Uh, we'll definitely have something at the next meeting. That I think we'll have. We'll have. We'll be starting to put some things in place. But uh, we've made a commitment, and I know this committee has made a commitment uh, to uh, look at some of our revolving fund in that, and, and to be able to work with the municipal side on this because. We know that if we if we could put both programs together, it's just going to strengthen the whole town's ability to communicate. So, I think that's uh, I think that's something that uh, that we believe certainly by the end of the month and into the first week of August that we should have some real uh, definitive plans on. But we, uh, we I think we're all on the same page now, which uh, which uh, I'm not sure we were at the beginning of last week. So we've really done a lot of exploration in that. The chief, when I met with him this morning, wanted me to remind everyone that as part of this, uh, part of the the, uh, the planning, uh, he submitted on Friday afternoon a grant uh, to the U.S. Department of Justice, uh, Office of Community Policing, and uh, in two areas, Office of, Office of Community Policing and the uh, Secure Our Schools grant, um, <clears throat> looking at a total of $112,500 worth of uh, of need that we have uh, and whether we're going to be able to fund it all with the grant we're not sure yet certainly from a consultant to really look at the whole community uh, schools included uh, uh, Paul just mentioned the radio system making sure that's state-of-the-art and up-to-date making sure our doors are all up-to-date in terms of uh, uh, safety emergency notification which is something that you just mentioned Larry making sure that we have uh, the ability to notify people in a moment's notice in, in a lot of different ways through the web uh, and uh, making sure that uh, we get to multiple sources that people have not only their home phone but cell phones business phones other things and, and also some uh, email messages uh, and uh, also a camera system that would that we think would would also enhance there's some very good programs <coughs> that, that that allow us all to connect via uh, password protected web uh, sites where we can really look from uh, uh, from almost any vantage point and that the police will be connected to that as well so uh, he believes that uh, that we have a very good chance at this and, and what we would have from the uh, from the federal government would be half of that amount so fifty six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars would be what we're hoping to gain from the, from those two grants and, and uh, he's hoping to hear in the next few years. I think we're, I think we're putting this together and, and I think as I said earlier we've made some good progress in a relatively short period of time. And the chief has um, invested a lot of his own time in helping us. Yes. So he deserves a lot of credit and a lot of recognition for that. Yeah. Dr. Martis, is the, um, is the goal then uh, some of these uh, free assessments, I'll call them, that you described earlier from the Patriots, um, do you believe that that will be completed before the start of school? I, I'm not sure, uh, in, in talking to Chief O'Leary, with the uh, Metrolec, I, I, I'm not sure that they can get to all of our schools in that period of time. That's a pretty aggressive, uh, that's a pretty, that would be a pretty aggressive plan. So we decided, let's take a look at our biggest schools first. Let's take a look at the high school and the, and the her and middle school, and then um, they will make a commitment. So I haven't seen the timeline, but just in, just in, Talking to Chief O'Leary, I think it's going to be difficult to to uh, to do all that. Now, maybe what we could do is have is have, and I haven't talked to Dan Murphy yet, is have uh, team ops start in the other direction mm -hmm. and look at the elementary schools and, and uh, make some decisions, and then and then we can kind of come at it that way. So we haven't had that discussion yet, but that's one that uh, 
that uh, we certainly could have. So just the assessment, knowing where we are and, and uh, how we react to, to anything. But some of it also was looking at our plans and, and looking at some other plans. And, and so some of that can happen <coughs> just without getting into a school. So. Good. Well, that emergency um, response plan, what's, what's exciting about that is we've talked in the past about uh, substitute teachers and how, how trained they are and aren't trained in situations. And having that in every classroom makes it very easy for, for someone in that classroom to know what's going on. It's also important, I think, for parents to have access to some of that information and be comfortable that, that there is a plan in place and how that plan works. Um, and, and it's important to, to really have this communication outreach to the community because everything comes down to trust. And, you know, when we had the situation in the high school and, and parents weren't communicated with and they didn't know what was going on, it created lots of issues. And while every problem creates opportunities, the opportunity was created to improve the security in the buildings, to improve the communication, to improve the potentially the cameras. And, and so um, it is one where we, we need to demonstrate to the community that we're listening to their concerns, we're addressing their concerns, and that we're doing everything we can to make sure that our schools are, are the safest that they can be and that every student and every employee is safe while they're in these buildings. Did you want to talk about the open positions as well? Sure. Uh, we have, um, some of you may have seen uh, the ad that we put in the uh, Sunday Globe, in the career section of the Sunday Globe uh, yesterday. Uh, we have, um, uh, just to go through these, uh, we have an assistant superintendent position uh, that is open that we've posted, uh, that we uh, have candidates that have been applying both, uh, both through the mail and through email. Uh, we have uh, right now an English language arts social studies uh, uh, kindergarten through grade eight director position open uh, that we're looking at candidates. We have a, a desktop technology uh, position, support specialist, I think we call it, position that's open. We have been looking, I know that um, we have taken one of our art teachers from the elementary level and, and uh, she's going to work here at the high school and uh, so that's created some openings at the elementary level. We're trying to figure out what those FTEs will look like in terms of scheduling and, and all of that. So we've posted, uh, we've posted those positions. We have a guidance uh, position open at uh, the at Hearn Middle School because of a transfer uh, here to the high school. And we have a guidance opening due to a resignation uh, here at the high school. Um, a librarian open again due, uh, here at the high school due to a transfer back to uh, the Ahern Middle School. We have uh, a moderate special needs position at the high school that's open and uh, a preschool position that's still open at, uh, at the Eagle School. And, we, and at, at this point in time, it's, it's not unusual to uh, uh, look at positions and see people that may be interested in taking a leave. We're dealing with a couple of people that are inter may be interested in in looking at graduate school and some other things. So we, my sense is we'll probably post a couple more positions in the next couple of weeks as we make those decisions. So where uh, the principals are working, uh, I know very diligently on this. I've met with uh, each one of them uh, to discuss the, uh, the process. And there's a lot of interviewing going on. And, and, uh, and we have some good candidates, I know that, because I've seen some of the credentials. And I, think we're, I think we're moving that along right now. Chris, I'd just like to reinforce publicly, um, there is some, some people who feel, uh, correctly or incorrectly, that when we have hired replacements for teachers who have retired or teachers that have left, that <coughs> from time to time we've looked at the salary as opposed to the qualifications, and that we've tried to save a few bucks if we could. And, um, I understand from one person who was into who interviewed for position, um, you, you know, she was asked, "Well, you make a lot of money, would you take a cut?" And I guess I just want to reemphasize that this school committee, I think, to a person, um, has said that we should be, whenever there's an opening, hiring the best qualified person. There is no pressure from the school committee to save three thousand, five thousand, ten thousand by hiring someone who's less experienced. It is clear that if we're going to raise the bar. Um, that we have to find the very best people. Now, in some cases, it's, it's 
creating an environment that attracts the right people. Right. In some cases, it's retaining the right people so that they don't leave. And in other cases, it's, it's making sure that all the hiring folks know that we're looking for quality first uh, and we'll figure out the finances subsequent to that. But it's discouraging to hear from time to time in the past where someone said, well, um, I was told in the interview I made too much money. Um, if they had the right qualifications, if they had the right skill sets, um, we should be looking at them from a qualification standpoint. Larry, has anyone said that to you recently? Um, I've heard that uh, in the last um, two months, yes. In, so in one of our schools. In one? In one, just in one, one school. One when candidate I mentioned, happened to answer that the reason that they, we weren't interested was because of too much money? The person indicated that in the interview, um, she was told she made a lot of money and how flexible would she be in reducing her requirements because that they didn't think they could afford her in that position. So what I did is I simply talked to the superintendent and said, don't know if it's true or false, wasn't in the interview. Sometimes people misrepresent things, but you should know that because it's clear that this committee has said over and over, we want the best people that we can have. So I just wanted to reinforce that publicly. With and, and, yeah, and we don't want that perception out there. No, I don't you think know, we've ever had it before. We, That's why yeah, I'm surprised. So we, yeah, but so it shows our inadequacy. And again, we, you know, know, we I need think to make our right. principles are better than that. Yeah. So that that's uh, yeah, that's something. That, and and I think as I you know mentioned uh, a little bit in the recent past that some of what we also need to do is put together a pretty aggressive recruiting schedule for next year, so that we're also bringing in candidates and and uh, interviewing people you know, as as we go along, so that we have. Uh, a file of people that would really want to hire if we have the right positions that open. So I mean that's that kind of aggressive human resource approach to it that that we we can borrow from you know from the business world that works really well. So you know that's something that uh, that I think we can and, and even in start to anticipate what our openings may be in the future for you know analyzing our our, 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 our pool of, uh, of professionals and trying to predict. Where, well, you always you know, can't always predict, but you could. You know, put some scenarios together to see where the openings may be in the next year or two, and really try to figure out how we uh, how we go about filling those pretty aggressively. And, and uh, you're right about the working conditions piece, though, too. But you know, when people see the condition of the buildings and they see the the resources that are available and they and they see the forward thinking that we have, uh, that's attractive to a lot of people. At the same time, I've also said, you know, we also need to make sure that we exit interview anyone who's leaving. So that we can get that sense, and again, that's another kind of human resource piece that's uh, that's important. So, and we're putting it all together. I think uh, I think you're right, though. We're not we're not looking at uh, we're looking at, we're really out looking at the best candidates. I've interviewed, uh, you know, brought in people in, in the last couple of weeks, people with with tremendous experience and, and some really good credentials. So you know, I've been pleased with that. It's very comforting that we're not living on the edge when it comes to filling science positions at the high school this year because I know last year or the year before we had a major problem yeah, trying to. Any, yeah, that's so it, it was, I know. I, I was kind of like, brought, brought, who, who's on this yeah. list that no, we're we missing? Brought, we brought in a math, uh, we actually were competing with another district uh, for a math candidate and, and uh, uh, Jeff had said to me, can you, you know, rush the person in because we want to see if we can really be you attractive. Lose that on. And uh, we did and gave him the weekend to think and uh, he picked us. That's good. Yeah, so I think we have. Uh, yeah, so to be we, have, we have a lot. Yeah, we have, yeah. we have a lot to offer. I think we need that's to be clear about That's collective recruiting, and I yeah. think yeah. that's yeah, that's the kind of make sure all those know. pieces come together. Okay. Can I just bring up something? It's 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 just reminding me as you talk about exit interviews. It might sure. not be exactly the time to discuss it, but um, maybe at a later date. Exit interviews for those parents who are, who are deciding to take their children mm -hmm. out of the school system. Mm -hmm. um, it's just uh, something that came to mind, you know, from fourth to fifth as well as from eighth to ninth. I think that's a critical area, so I'm sure we're going to be seeing when we see our enrollment for, for the fall. Again, I, it's that spirit of I trying, think that's to, a great, I think that's trying a great to talk idea. to people yeah, and understand what it is that, that yeah. we've done well and yeah. what is it that we can do better so that we aren't only losing teachers or administrators but also um, and families. Right. I think that's critical. Yeah. I think one way of looking at it too is if you see a student who goes out of here for a high school and they're going to a very good high school, then I think we should take pride in the fact that we did a good job of preparing them to go to that good high school. So I think it's kind of a double edged sword, but um, I mean, parents are going to look out for their best interest, but I, I think we should take comfort sometime in, in the fact that when they do go off to a good high school, 
that we laid the foundation. Right. I think that's important. I just don't yeah. want to make any assumptions yeah. about that too, though, Martha, because I yeah. think sometimes in the past, you know. Well, they have entrance requirements, so it's not it's not like just any. Well, we, right. we also know because we, uh, our guidance staff and our, and our teachers are writing some of the references yeah. for kids and families for. Yeah. You know, looking at other schools, I, I know we put we put a, a very, I think, a very good program together in Medfield when I was there, and uh, found uh, two or three areas and a couple of people that were disgruntled, and, and you, you listen to that, you try to figure out what happened. Uh, but uh, uh, the first one was uh, well, three areas. One was uh, athletics uh, to go to a larger school, uh, and. Uh, Medfield's a very high school is just down the road, so and if the kids couldn't compete, they'd come back the next year. So <laughs> that was interesting. <coughs> um, for uh, kind of legacy reasons, parents are very interested in their family has gone through X school or, or a type of school, uh, private school, uh, and uh, religious reasons as well. So it'll be interesting to see as we do this what what other indicators might be out there, but. Uh, we we can find that out because we do a lot of that work, you know, in terms of knowing who's thinking and why and, and all yeah. that. So, well, we offered yeah. two new sports, the lacrosse and the hockey, which, un unfortunately, sometimes we had kids who went off to other schools because we didn't offer those. Right. So by right. offering a, a wider range of things here, right. we're a little bit more competitive also. So. And that's where you start to listen to people. Yeah. What are they, you know, what, what are they, and can yeah. we do this? In some cases we can, in some cases we can't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but those are the decisions we have. So we and they fall. You you sound uh, very comfortable. Just to give you a heads up, this is something that this committee will look over the list. We usually have 25 out system wide, 25 in. So, but the conversation I think that we have is for what reasons, and are, have we attended to other reasons? Because sometimes there's also, as Katie mentioned, a, a perception, right or wrong, that it's because something is lacking in a building that mm -hmm. automatically parents, for these other reasons, religious, legacy, and whatnot, take their students out. And then we have, uh, you know, um, others. I, I like your approach, Dr. Martis, when you say, let's talk about what we do well, and let's talk about how we can do better and what we need to do better. So um, just to warn you, usually, by the good, no, good. when that's we review class size, it's always right. a lively discussion by this group. But I think it's good that we have that discussion. I do, too. Yeah. Any other questions for Dr. Martis on any of these topics? Okay, uh, food service bids, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Chairman, our food service operation <coughs> participates with 20, 29 other communities to bid uh, supplies and food through the Tech Collaborative, the Education Cooperative, it's known as Tech. So tonight I'd like to recommend the award of a number of the, uh, the bids. On milk and milk products, there were two bidders. I would recommend the bid be awarded to Oakhurst Dairy at the prices bid. Do you want to do these individually? No, we're do just doing approval at the end. Okay. The uh, paper and related okay. products, low bidder. We had three bids. Low bidder was Mansfield they Paper. That's all right. <laughs> For breads and rolls, there were three bidders. Low bid was Malari Foods. And the amounts, by the way, are for the 29 towns. Uh, I also did not mention that. Oh, of course, when I saw the number, I was, yeah. I was wondering how we were, if we're breaking even or we're over budget. This would be for zone <laughs> three, and uh, they broke up the uh, bids into zones because of transportation requirements. Oh, wow. And wow. there would be some bidders that would be more apt to bid on the South Shore mm -hmm. and wouldn't be as apt to bid on the North Shore. So, from a competitive standpoint, they bid the uh, products into four, they broke the products into four zones. And then submitted bids. Uh, frozen foods, three bidders. Low bidders submitted by Costa Fruit and Produce. Frozen other, three bidders. Low bidders submitted by Costa Fruit and Produce. Healthy snacks, uh, three bidders. Costa Fruit and Produce was low bidder. And on dry miscellaneous, there were three bidders. Thurston Foods provided the low bid for the dry miscellaneous. On dairy products, three bidders, low bid was provided by Thurston Foods. And that rounds out the, uh, the bids for the cafeteria. Questions from the committee members? Where is Very Portland, Maine? I think it's a typo. I think it's Portland, Maine. Really? Let's see. Oh, you'd think the Corellic would be uh, Yeah, because it would be local. 
So that's me. Okay. Hmm. 207 would be a me. I think 207 is a yeah. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the list? I'll make a motion. Motion I'll by Martha, seconded by Kate. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. Okay. Now, um, under other matters, there's two items that um, have come to my attention. Number one, um, there has been a suggestion made that the uh, regular school committee meeting meeting in August uh, be moved closer to the beginning of school. So instead of the first week, um, we're looking at potentially. I think it's August 20th. So I just ask you if you would check your calendars to get back to Wendy if the 20th would create a problem for anybody. Mm -hmm. And then the other issue is that there, um, for the policy meeting, um, there has been a suggestion to um, A, change a date, and two, add additional dates to finish the review process. And so, um, this is a note I got from Wendy at the beginning of the meeting from Jim Hardy. Um, as I review my schedule for July, I discovered that the two dates I have scheduled for meetings, July 13th and July 27th, are both of a conflict to me, and I can't attend either one of them. So he's asking I if... It for, I don't have a problem with keeping it. We did a great job the other night. We were able to give him the, the, the CD, and you know, I, I actually, I, I talked to him about it, and I, I said, as long as he didn't mind, it was no... You know, reflection on him, but I'd rather keep keep doing what we're doing. Because then we'll we'll finish before yeah. the school year. Which right. if we go into the school year, that was yeah. the whole point of meeting right. over the summer. Right. So, we right. the right. so, so we just need a date that he can be in the room on the next date after the twenty. Right. There's a time that he needs. To, okay. He needs to be there. Well, well, as long more. as he doesn't, yeah, you yeah, talk to him. As yeah. long as he doesn't feel that. Yeah. Right. No, I, I told him, I said, you know, I, I would have been shocked if you could have, you know, certainly things come up and it's a wedding or something that he has to go to. I mean, you, you can't say, well, you can't go. You know, we, we did find the other night, so I, I think. Um, but we'll still need another meeting scheduled, don't we, in order to All right, did he process? come up with a... Um, well, we were going to ask the question, because we were able to get through so much, it was a very meaty section that he yeah. thought we wouldn't be able to do it, but we did it, yeah. and we had the last three sections... We, the question we were going to ask Jim, did he think we could get that done? All right, let's do this. Paul, why don't you more? give him a call and see if you can get a copy of what's left, okay? Or Wendy. Oh, but we're <laughs> still behind a section. Well, let's see how, how big they yeah. are and how much work we have to do on them. Because but in the last meeting, we were supposed to do a different section. Right, right. Well, right. But, yeah. but by getting them all, we can yeah, see... We can how much we've got and okay. try to figure out how long it might take. I believe we still, no matter what, need two meetings. So therefore, yeah. we're going oh, yeah. to have to schedule one more. Yeah. But if we could still, if we know for all of us that July 27th is still good, we should still keep yeah. that I'd, and I'd do like what we did last time. Right, so keep yeah. July 27th yeah. and, and then August schedule meeting. one more. Yeah. yeah. So we don't have any August meetings, right? Not for policy. Not for policy. Yeah, okay. Just, I don't have my book with right. me. So okay. if anybody's got a problem with an August Friday, get it to Wendy and Wendy well, will we, coordinate the, the re, If I may suggest only because some people want to be taking off for the weekend, mm -hmm. if, if there is another night, especially if Jim's not coming. Okay, my only night I can't do anything is a Tuesday night. So I, I will bow to anything else. I, I don't. Did I can do any night, but I prefer not to be Friday night no. this summer. That's fine. He gave me dates in July, not but August. But not August. Okay. Right. Right. Why don't you see what he, he because certainly Wendy. we're going to need him for that one. Right. So why don't so you find out. We we'll need him for that one. Yeah. I can do anything. We just don't want to do a Friday. I could do Friday. I would prefer. Okay. okay. I might dream I'll get away I, one Friday. As long as it's not Tuesday. Tuesday some, night some night. Okay. So if everybody just check their calendars, try to get to Wendy this week, we'll try to set up one more meeting for August and try to wrap up the policy okay. review. And then he can make all the changes, get us back a clean yep. copy of all the changes for a, a second review by all of us. Mm. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, all right. That's all I have. Chris? Yeah. Uh, I apologize for this. It was in my notes, and I didn't didn't see it. I just I just want uh, the committee to and the public to understand that um, I mentioned that we had posted the assistance of the position, and uh, we I believe will have been posted for a couple more weeks, 
and then go into the first week of August and uh, put a small screening committee together to review candidates. And I'm hoping, particularly uh, if the 20th does work, if August 20th does work, that I'll have a candidate to the committee by the 20th. So okay, putting the okay. process together and, and uh, we're asking for some, uh, some support. I mentioned to Larry the other day, a school committee member or two on that committee would, uh, would certainly be helpful. A couple of administrators, teachers, Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. So I'm in the middle of developing that right now as the as the uh, application is open. So. Okay, perfect. Uh, Martha, any other business for you? Not for me. Katie? Yeah, one thing I just did want to bring up in the mail, as I'm sure you all received, was the uh, mask and mass joint conference that's going to be held, and I know it's and there's the a familiar early face early. on that. Early bird oh, yeah. special. Two we'll things. Save some money. <laughs> one, yeah, one is, the date is um, <laughs> November 14th through the 7th. So I did want to bring everyone's attention. I'm sorry, Dr. Martis, but <laughs> there's a picture of Dr. Martis here <laughs> because he's the president of uh, Mass. So I think anyway, it would behoove I, all of us to try and attend yes, this so we can absolutely. support our new superintendent. Yes, absolutely. So I've already put into my hand. But I, I saw that and I opened it. Kind of when did you put information? information? I just don't know about the overnight. You probably haven't made it through your mail yet, Larry. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> because the sooner we put in, we get a reduced rate on the tuition. So yes. Martha's in, I'm in. I'm in. And, and I'm just, sure Beverly. Just to, not just because of this, but just to plug this for a second. <laughs> It, it's, it really speaks to what we talked about earlier. I mean, there's a real focus on global education Absolutely. and really making a difference. It's something that the Superintendents Association is taking seriously. Uh, we have a panel coming up. There's an there's a executive institute this week that I'll be attending uh, as the president of the association. We have a panel of, of uh, business leaders that, that are going to speak to this. Paul Harrington, who's an economist at Northeastern University, is going to speak to it. So we're really trying to make this a theme that, and I know that Glenn Kucher and yeah, they do a great uh, the job. Yeah, folks are really are a very yeah, interesting really in bringing in the right people and, and uh, you know creating that strong message. So it'll be something I think we'll all uh, be part of. Kate, did you have anything on the other business? No, I'm upset. Okay, um, I will then um, try to make sure I get this correct. Um, would like a motion to go into executive session to discuss strategy negotiations with non-union personnel not to come out into public session. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All right, I will call the board, Martha. Aye. Kate? Aye. Katie? Aye. And I'm aye, so 4-0. Okay. Okay. We're not coming out. <laughs>